Protesters in Egypt and Lebanon have proclaimed today a day of rage, with Lebanese Sunnis protesting against the nomination of the new prime minister and Egyptians protesting against the Mubarak government. Now, the situations in Egypt and Lebanon have very, very little in common, if anything at all. So we'll begin by looking at the situation in Lebanon. Hezbollah, with the backing of Syria, engineered a collapse of the Lebanese government. Once the Lebanese government fell apart, premonitions of a return to civil war started making their appearance in the Lebanese media. Uh, in this whole scenario, though, Syria and Hezbollah knew that they held the upper hand. If anyone wanted to avoid a bigger conflict, and that includes the Americans, the Saudis, and many of Lebanon's own factions, then they would have to come to Syria to negotiate on Syrian terms. Those terms meant getting rid of Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri and also neutralizing the Special Tribunal for Lebanon investigating his father's murder. And that investigation was putting at risk a number of Hezbollah and Syrian officials. Now a compromise candidate of sorts, Najib Makati, has been nominated as Lebanon's next Prime Minister. Now, according to Lebanese law, the prime minister has to be Sunni. This is causing a lot of anger amongst Lebanon Sunnis who are outraged that Lebanon's next prime minister is someone who's been nominated by their arch rivals in Hezbollah. Now we have a situation where Lebanon Sunnis are the ones leading violent protests in the country and everyone appealing for calm. And again, this works in Hezbollah's favor. For once, they're not seen as the propagators of violence the Sunnis are, and Hezbollah is using this to sow more divisions within the Sunni camp. Now, as everyone is trying to defuse this crisis, uh, the terms for a compromise are going to have to entail neutralizing the Special Tribunal for Lebanon investigation into the Hariri murder, and that means largely absolving Syria and many Hezbollah officials of blame for that murder. In the end, the Saudis and Americans will have miscalculated while the Syrians will have returned to their preeminent position in Lebanon. In Egypt, lots of fears are rising over whether Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak will be dealt the same fate as Tunisian President Ben Ali, who was overthrown in a popular revolt. In trying to take advantage of the Tunisia situation, a small group of Facebook mobilized protesters called the April 6th Youth Movement have mobilized today in this day of rage. This is where we really need to factor in the differences between Egypt and Tunisia, and one of the biggest factors uh, to look at is the U.S. Uh, the broader strategic interest for the United States right now is to maintain stability within Egypt and to ensure a smooth transition between Mubarak and his successor. Now, this is not only vital to the U.S. interests, but also to the Israelis who do not want to see a crisis erupt in the country that could be exploited by Egypt's well-organized Islamist movement. So amidst all of these concerns and these protests, it's very little coincidence that the Egyptian army chief of staff is in Washington right now with the U.S. getting assurances from the Egyptian army that the army will not abandon Mubarak like the Tunisian army did with Ben Ali.